All right, welcome. Let's get started with our area and perimeter unit with lesson one. Before we start lesson one, let's talk about what our goal is going to be for this unit. So our essential question is, how do I use area and perimeter to solve geometry problems? Your learning goal for this unit is I can explain and use area and perimeter formulas to solve multi-step problems, all right? If you're at a level four, you can do the learning goal, but you can also find the area and perimeter of irregular shapes. You'll find out about that a little bit later in our lessons. Your learning goal is I can explain and use the area and perimeter formulas to solve multi-step problems. None of us are probably there because I haven't really taught it yet. Level two, with the help from a teacher or a peer, I can use the area and perimeter formulas to solve multi-step problems. Some of you might be here. And even with uh, peer teacher assistance, I am not successful at meeting the learning goal. That's level one. Most of us are probably in this range, so that's fine. Go ahead, before you get started, give yourself a rating and circle it. And so I know that's where you are at the beginning of our lesson one today, okay, for your homework. So lesson one is specifically on perimeter and how to find perimeter. So there are two definitions I'm going to need you to write down first, okay? So area is the amount of space inside of a flat object. We're going to talk about area in lesson two, all right? Perimeter is the length of space around an object. And if you need to pause the video to write these down, please pause now. All right? Perimeter is measured in the form of length. Yes, you need to be writing this down. These are your notes. For example, perimeter can be measured in meters, inches, yards, feet, centimeters. All right, those are all measurements of length. All right, and to give you an example, here I have a rectangle. And if I were to take all of the sides of this rectangle and put them together, that's how I would get my perimeter. So if I took this length, plus this length, plus this length, plus this length, and put it all together, I would have the perimeter of my original rectangle because the perimeter is the edge of an object or the length of the edges of the object. So let's pretend that this is 10 centimeters long, this top length, and my width is five centimeters. Right, because this is a rectangle and all the sides are the same length, I know the bottom is 10 centimeters and then the other width is 5 centimeters as well. So if I took this centimeter piece, which is 10, plus this centimeter piece, plus these two 5 centimeter pieces, I would have the perimeter. So all together, these two 5 centimeter pieces equal 10 centimeters. These two pieces for my 10 centimeters, so these are 20 centimeters, and then all together, these pieces plus these pieces, you would bring these two together and you get a total of 30 centimeters is the perimeter of that shape, okay, of that rectangle specifically, all right? So let's try some practice. Let's find the perimeter of this space. So if you, here you see you have these unit boxes all right, so if we were to measure along the edges, you would have one, two, three, four, five units on the bottom. One, two, three, four units across the side. One, two, three, four, five units for my top length. And then one, two, three, four more units for the right side. So if I put these together, if I did five plus five plus four plus four, I would get a total of 18 units for my perimeter. P stands for perimeter, so P equals 18 units. Let's try another one. Let's find the perimeter of this shape. So again, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six units my length on the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units on the left, one, two, three, four, five, six units across the top length, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units again across the side. So to find the perimeter P, 
we would add all of these side lengths together. So 6 plus 6 is 12, 7 plus 7 is 14, so 12 plus 17, that's equal to 19 units for the perimeter. Let's try another one. This perimeter is a little bit bigger. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 units. And I think you're noticing a pattern because I'm giving you squares and rectangles. The top perimeter and the bottom perimeter are the same, or the length is the same. And then down the side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 units for my width. So I have 12 units on both sides. Now I just need to add all of these up. 10 and 10 is 20. 12 and 12 is 24. So 10 plus 10 plus 12 plus 12. Or 20, here's my 20, plus 24 is equal to 44 units for the perimeter. All right, next one. All right, this one's a little bit different because my, obviously I don't have a rectangle here, so I'm gonna have to really pay attention. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. Now this is an irregular shape, so if you're able to find the perimeter on this without help, you could be a level two at the end of this. So this side and this side, if I look at them, they're the same height as this 8, right? So these two numbers should add up to 8 because they're both the width, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. And then 1, 2 units. And look, 6 and 6 is 8. So it makes sense that my two sides are the same width, right? Now let's look across the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the bottom is 10 units. Now, just like the 8 units, it should, these two sides should add up to the 8 because they're both widths. Let's see if my lengths both add, both add up too. So I have this is a length and this is a length. And both of these lengths together should make 10 because they're just as long as the 10. So you have one, two units here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. That makes sense because eight and two is 10. So my lengths are the same as well. All right. So let's add these together. I have eight on one side, six and two is eight on the other side. I have 10 on the bottom, 2 and 8 is 10 across the top, so 8 and 8 is 16, 10 and 10 is 20 units, and if I put all of those units together, I have 36 units. So that's how you find the perimeter of an irregular shape. All right. Again, let's find the perimeter. So, one, two, okay, this side is the same, so two, okay? One and one, like a half and a half, that'll make a hole, and that's two, three across the top, all right? I have one, two here, and then this is a half and this is a half, making the total a three as well. And then finally, don't forget this length along the side. So you have one and one here. So adding them all together, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then let me put my halves together. One, two, three, four halves, which is the same as two holes. So I have ten plus two gives me a total of 12 units. All right, let's do this one. So I have one, two, three, four across the top, 
And remember, the bottom should be the same because I'm working with um, a shape that is square-like. Okay, so one, two, three, four units across the bottom. I have one, two, three, four for the width on this side. And I should have the same on the other side. One, two, three, four. Okay? So all together, this is four, eight, 12, 16 units for the perimeter. Now it's your turn. For homework tonight, you are to list three things around your house that you would measure in perimeter. For example, the length of a fence outside would be perimeter because it goes all the way around the yard. So you're to come up with three other things that show example of perimeter. And then the next three shapes, I would like you to find the perimeter in units. I will show them to you and you can pause the video as you need. Here is the first shape. Please find the perimeter. Here's the next shape. Please find the perimeter. Remember, it's irregular, so your widths and your lengths should add up to be the same. And again, another irregular shape. So your widths and your lengths should add up to be the same. Great work. Please revisit the learning goal once you are finished. I'll show it to you real quick. Here is our learning goal for this lesson. At the end of this lesson, what I would like you to do is I would like you to rate yourself again. This time put a triangle around your rating, rating by your lesson title. And tell me, are you a four, a three, a two, or a one? Okay, so let me give you an example. If at the, end, at the beginning of lesson one, you were a one, you should have circled it. At the end of lesson one, if you became a two, I want you to put a triangle. If you stayed in the same place, that's okay. I would just like your rating, your level where you are to be next to the lesson title, okay guys? All right, thank you so much for the hard work and I will see you tomorrow.